Hey y'all, on today's Tuesday Talks for RVers, we're gonna dive a little deeper into leveling. We did a video previously on leveling and we used the Anderson buckets and Anderson levelers and Steve, I'm gonna go with Steve B because I don't wanna murder your last name, had asked a question and asked for a little more in-depth video. So Steve, today I'm gonna dive a little deeper just for you. process when we get to a campground is pretty similar. Jimmy stays in the truck. I get out and man the controls. Uh, today we are fortunate enough to be staying at a harvest host so this was the perfect opportunity to not be blocking the road or anything like that while we dive a little deeper. So I know that everyone does not have the same leveling system that we have. However, this is the only one I have to give you an example on, so I'll talk to you as best I can with the knowledge that I have. So when I get out and I turn it on, the red dots, so at this particular site, the front and the right side both need to come up. That's what the red dots mean. If you go over here into manual mode and hit enter, if you hit right or left, it'll tell you how far off it is. So 3.5 is a pretty big difference. Um, the front's not going to be as bad. So what that means is this particular site, we're going to get out. I'm going to get the camper where I want it. We're going to get out and get the Anderson levelers and we're going to go ahead and bring that right side up first. But to answer Steve's question, because the front still needs to come up to be level, I definitely know I have enough room to put my Anderson buckets under the front feet. If the reverse was the case, if the rear needed to come up, there's a good chance I won't have enough room for the buckets to be in the front because as we mentioned previously, the process for the leveling system is once you get it off the truck and you tell it to level, the front's gonna drop down first and maybe come back up a little. Then it's gonna drop the jacks on the driver's side till they hit the ground and have some pressure. Then it's gonna drop them on the other side going to work out side to side level first and then it's going to either raise the front up or lower the front to get a front to back level. So the problem Steve was having was his front end needed to come down so when he put the buckets in it didn't have enough room to get down far enough to start that process. So this is what I use to determine whether or not I'm even going to be able to use the buckets in the front and sometimes you just can't use them. Today we're going to be able to but we're going to show you how we use the Anderson levelers and how we use the buckets step by step. So let's go around to the other side and get the leveler set up so we can get started. For anyone who's not familiar with the Anderson levelers and how they work, uh, you're going to either back or drive, you know, whichever way you want to set them, on there until it gets level and then you'll put the other chalk under it so that it keeps it flat. Still, I'm not sure the right word. These aren't, depending on who you ask, they may or may not be necessary. I don't like to, if I hit level right now, the camper would probably level itself and these tires would be completely off the ground. Depending on who you ask, that's a problem, or maybe it's not. I'm just more comfortable at least having something under it. What I use to determine whether to have him back on or pull onto these is, for example, we already looked and it was off by 3.5 at the, at the um, command center. So what that means is we're going to use probably every bit of this to get it somewhat close to level. The tires may still not sit on this because it may be too much, but if that's the case, I don't want to pull forward when we're leaning downhill in the front too. I'm going to rather have him back up so that I can get my chalk underneath here so that if it were to roll one way or the other, it's going to roll downhill, which is going to be forward, and I feel like this is a little more stable. That's just my opinion. There's nothing scientific to it. So my process, once I decide how I want him to handle that, is I put the levelers where I'm going to want them to be. So for example, if I want the tires to end up here and I want him to back onto them, this is where I want the tire to finish. So I'm going to sit it right beside the tire. I'm going to have Jimmy pull up 
so that the back side of that tire is right even with this, you know, the little, the beginning part of it, whatever the right word would be. And then I'm gonna slide those behind the tire. Then I'll have him back up till he's right up on top. I'll put the chocks in. Then I'll roll over to the other side and put chocks on those wheels. Those wheels are gonna stay on the ground. So we're gonna chalk that side, but these are just gonna be the chocks to hold the levelers in place. Yeah, and unless this is, you know, there's a tree or something involved, this doesn't have to be an exact science, just where you think you want it. So, we're gonna pull these over, get them secured under there. Sometimes with the center tires, it's a little tight. And now we'll have him back up. Stop right there. So we're using the majority of that. And slide these chocks underneath. And I actually think he can maybe come back a little further. So we're going to come back just a little bit more. Now, he's gonna keep his foot on the brake until I get all these secured so that he doesn't roll up and mash my fingers. Okay, so now we're gonna check and see what change that made here. The front probably is not gonna be any change, but the right was at 3.5. Now it's only off by 1.6. So still a little bit, there's a little playroom there and the, the levelers can only be but so big. Um, the front is still low. And just like I said earlier, if the front needs to come down, you can't put the buckets here. The same applies to the next two jacks on this side. Since this side is gonna be lower, you may or may not have room to put your buckets under there. So check that, you know, if, if they won't fit, they won't fit. You just don't need them. And if, you know, maybe like on, in this instance, we'll probably put the buckets on the other side and not worry about this side because that side needs to come up and I want there to be more stability over there. So we're gonna run through the rest of the process. We're gonna get it off the truck with the level button and then we'll check out everything and see what it looks like over there. Um, for those of you that do or do not know, uh, one of the features on this particular leveling system, when you unplug this from the back of your truck, it recalls where this is. So when you're reversing the process and hooking it back up to your truck and you want it to be at the right level to, to catch your, um, your hitch, when you first turn this on, if you push the left and right button together, it is supposed to take you back to the level you were at when you disconnected from the truck. Disconnect from the truck meaning when this plug was disconnected from the truck. Before everybody gets all up in a tizzy about that, there is a safety feature that will not allow it to drop the front end to get to that level. So if the front end needs to come down to reach that level, it's not gonna work. It's gonna say feature disabled when you try to do it and it's not gonna work. Don't get frustrated, that's the way it's supposed to work. However, if the front end has to drop, you know, when you're level at your camper and when you're going to hook it back up to the truck, it needs to come up, it will go up. So it's a great procedure, but it only works some of the time. But in case you didn't know that was an option, it is an option. And in worst case scenario, if you hit the button and it doesn't work, it's because it needs to drop down and it won't do that for safety reasons. Another plug I wanna throw in 
is for this handy little contraption we got in Tampa last year. It's made by Moride. We have a video. Jimmy can put a link above for that. Um, when we get where we're going, this hole's notched out like your plug is. You simply put your plug through there. Then you rotate this around. And I just like to lay this up here so it stays out of the way. Originally, the thought was it was going to be called a turtle, but I think for whatever reason, Moride decided against that, and it's called a cord keeper, but it is available through Moride now. And this is just magnetically attached to our pen box. The only time we ever take it off is to show people. So short of that, it lives there while we're traveling everywhere. We've never had it move. It just stays right there. So just another neat little something we have that we really enjoy. So Steve, I hope you were watching, and I hope that answered your questions. If not, feel free to contact us back. Um, and for those of you that are Harvest Host members, or even those of you that aren't but are thinking about maybe joining, today we are able to do this and not block up the campground because we are at my favorite Harvest Host, Sutler Post Farm. It's a Clydesdale farm. Uh, you can come and take a tour, learn all about the horses, learn about the, the family that owns them and takes care of them. So if you're ever in or near Mechanicsville, Maryland, please be sure to check them out because it's just an awesome place and an awesome group of people. Till the next time you find us camping, be it in a campground or a harvest host, safe travels, y'all.